This is a metabolism killer. Despite what those protein bros are telling you down at the gym, there is accumulating evidence that restricting protein and specifically restricting branched chain amino acids can help your metabolic rate and potentially help get you back on track, help you lose weight, get you out of torpor. I've been having good luck experimenting with protein restriction. I've been around five or 6% of calories as protein. And there's been a lot of people trying this. Uh, there's a whole discussion thread about it over at r slash saturated fat on Reddit. And people have been reporting on Twitter good results from uh, this method of restricting protein. A lot of the experimental evidence uh, for this idea of protein restriction and branched chain amino acid restriction was done by the Lamming Lab. And this is their classic paper. You can see this means low branched chain amino acids. This white line is the body weight of mice on a high fat diet and if you remove the branched chain amino acids uh, you can see they don't gain the weight and if you just remove isoleucine they become very lean indeed a, a downside of this study is it's done just in one inbred strain of mouse these are the mice that are most commonly used in diet induced obesity studies uh, but there's some weird things about them they don't have the enzyme nnt which i call complex six it's possible that something about this uh, branched chain amino acid restriction is specific to this strain of mice. And so I thought about this classic uh, John Speakman paper. This paper is very impressive. They ran, I think it's 480 mice through a battery of different feeding protocols. And you can see they, they varied uh, the amount of fat in their diets from 10% of calories up to 80%. They played with sugar. They went from 5% sugar in the diet up to 30%. And they increased protein from 5% to 30%. And what they were testing was the protein leverage hypothesis. This is what the protein bros will tell you is that protein is very satiating per calorie per calorie. And you build muscle out of it. And so the idea is that if you increase protein in your diet, it has all these beneficial effects. And what they're studying here is they're trying to see if increasing protein will actually make the mice leaner. You can see this mice is saying I was predicted to get thinner as his calories from protein increase. What they wound up concluding from this paper is that body adiposity increased with increasing dietary protein content. So the more protein they fed the mice, actually the fatter that they were, it says on the 60% fat diets with variable protein contents, body weight, lean mass, and adiposity all increased. And you can see it's in italics because they're surprised by this with increasing protein content in the diets at the end of the experimental period. So in these two graphs, this is the normal strain of mice and they're getting 60% of their calories from fat. The fat, by the way, is a pretty reasonable, sort of based on the standard American diet, it's made of, uh, there's actually cocoa butter in there and coconut oil, a uh, little bit of safflower oil or sunflower oil, I think it was. Um, it's, not, it's not a super, super unsaturated blend. And the protein source in this is all casein. So that's milk protein, so it's high in branched chain amino acids. This is the normal laboratory strain of mice. Uh, they're given 60% fat and the protein content is increased. You can see here from 5% up to 30% in the final experiment. In this table, they're reporting actually uh, calories in. So this is energy intake is the, is the blue triangle. And you can see that the mice on the least amount of protein did in fact consume the most calories. So you could look at that and think, well, perhaps there's something to this idea that protein is more satiating than the other macromolecules. But the problem with that is the mice who only got 5% protein have the least amount of body fat. And this is actually, this is not a body fat percentage. This is grams of body fat. Uh, at 5%, they only had about 12 grams of body fat. And at higher dietary protein levels, that went up to maybe 17 grams of body fat. And so the mice with only 5% protein were the leanest mice when given 60% of calories as fat. This is kind of the same experiment, but these ones are given a diet that's only 20% of calories as fat. And you can see again, the mice given the lowest amount of protein consumes the most calories and has the least amount of body fat. These guys are down to about five grams of body fat on that 5% protein diet, despite the fact that they're eating the most calories. You know, whenever you're thinking about calories in, calories out, perhaps the most important thing is what is the thing that you're eating? What is its effect on metabolic rate. And so what they did in this paper that's really very different from uh, what the Lambing Lab did is with this initial bit of data out of these mice, they then uh, did, repeated the same experiment in four totally different strains of mice. These are all inbred lab strains. There's of course different things about them, but we've got four different strains of mice. And so these are all at 60% fat and they're increasing 
the amount of casing, the amount of protein that they're given. And you can see that particularly in the Balb sea mice and this other uh, strain called C3H, uh, at 5% uh, protein, they have dramatically less body fat. So this table is in percentage. Uh, so these mice here, the Balb C at only 5%, protein are very lean indeed. They've got about 7% body fat. If you go to 10% protein, it jumps way up to 15% body fat. Uh, C3H at 5% protein have about 14% body fat. That's that's pretty good. By the time you get up to 20% uh, protein, uh, it is at 25% uh, body fat on the CH3. And like I say, they just did a battery of different experiments. This is just another way to look at kind of the same problem. So here they kept the mice on 10% protein, and these mice are on 25% protein, and they're increasing uh, dietary fat content. And so uh, fat percent of calories is going from 10 up to 80. Um, and, and I highlighted when fat content hits 40%, uh, the mice on 10% protein are around 33, 32, 33% body fat percentage by my eye. And this is the same strain of mice on 40% uh, fat calories and 25% protein calories. And these guys are more like 38% of body fat. Um, and so you see if you go from a 10% protein baseline to a 25% protein baseline, same amount of fat, the mice are significantly fatter at the higher protein level. So in addition to all of these tests feeding uh, 30 different test diets or something like that to 480 different mice, they also put the mice into metabolic chambers and actually measured their um, their energy expenditure. In every single strain uh, at 5% protein content, these are the things I've highlighted in red, in the, the normal kind of lab strain of mice, 5% protein content, their energy expenditure is 78 kilojoules per day. When that protein goes to 10%, it's down to 70 kilojoules. So that's about a 10% drop in metabolic rate going from 5% percent protein to 10 percent protein and then if you go all the way to 30 percent protein there's another uh drop there down to 65 kilojoules so that's about a 20 percent drop in metabolic rate going from five percent protein to 30 percent protein this repeats in almost literally all of these strains uh you can see belb c goes from 93 to 76 to 64 uh dba2 83 to 76 to 74 that one doesn't slump as much uh, as you go lower, C3H goes from 115 to 100 to 83, and FBB goes from 95 to 75 to 71. And so you see consistently in five different strains of mice, increasing protein decreases metabolic rate. Full stop. So another thing they do with these mice is they have like a laser beam. Uh, that's in their little enclosure. And every time that they walk and they, and they break that light um, that's hitting a target, every time they walk between the light and the target, uh, it counts as a, as a beam break. They just count how many times the mice are up and walking around and, and blocking that laser beam. And that's counted as movement, right? And you just count up how many times the mice move around every day. So what they're doing here is they're, uh, they're increasing the fat these mice are on the 10% protein diet. These mice are on the 25% protein diet. The mice on a low fat, low protein diet are the most active. They have 90 beam breaks. I'm not sure the exact quantification of these, but, but you can see this is physical. This is physical activity. The mice on 10% fat and 5% protein are the most active by a significant amount. And so I've been promoting the emergence diet for weight loss, which is a relatively low fat, low protein diet. And you can see these, this, that type of diet actually makes the mice more spontaneously active, probably because they have more energy, right? They're, they're running their mitochondria more efficiently. They have more ATP. And so having more energy, having more ATP causes you to be more active. It's not necessarily the other way around, right? The mice are getting up and walking around more just because their energy metabolism is more efficient and that's making them get up and move around. All right. So, uh, just a short one this week, I've got a big episode coming up next week. Uh, I'm very excited about that. So in addition to all of the data coming out of the lambing lab, and they've done some clinical trials in humans showing that, 
uh, reducing protein and reducing BCAA consumption can help with insulin sensitivity. In addition to the community trials that have been done with low protein diets and the good weight loss success that people have been having, and those results have all been posted over on r slash saturated fat on Reddit. This Speakman paper was trying to show that increasing protein would make mice leaner. In fact, they showed just the opposite. The mice that were on a protein restricted diet down at 5% of calories had the highest metabolic rate, were the least fat, they had the least adiposity, the least fatness, and they were the most spontaneously active. Not because they were reading articles in the media saying that they needed to exercise, but because they felt better because their metabolisms were working better. Um, that's it for this week, guys. I will see you next one.